Hey, welcome class. This is going to be our first demonstration for our next project, Project 2, the techniques and um, the techniques challenge with all different kinds of um, uh, elements that we're going to be using from um, live elements and just cut from the trees, wood pieces, all types of things. So it should be really exciting. Um, and also, again, on this one, I don't want you to think that this is the wrong way of doing it or this isn't, you know, correct or something. This is, this is a real free-form project. And uh, I know some, some, sometimes people aren't comfortable with that, but um, I think it's something you really, you know, as an artist and designer, you have to just do things that are kind of spontaneous and of the moment, okay? So what I'm going to show today is, again, this is Fowl's you know, write what we were talking about with the, uh, the papers that you had that we sent. And then um, some of these have smaller type uh, step-by-steps also inside the, um, you know, also inside the um, PowerPoint set they sent you, okay? So um, we're going to start. Now remember, when you do any of these things, um, as I said in my email to you the other day, make sure that you uh, get an idea of what size you're going to do. Sometimes it's better to go a little bit larger because then you can cut it down. Remember, when we're doing these techniques, a lot of times, God, there might be half of it looks really great and the other half we really don't want. Um, but I would highly suggest that, you know, wherever you go shopping or Amazon or whatever you use, I would highly suggest um, getting getting that book that we're going to be using it's it's usually a, a black covered book you've seen them before with plastic inserts so you can put uh pieces uh, you know right into there um again we're hoping to do you know 10 to 12 pieces and uh, it'll be exciting for your portfolio and plus a lot of these end up being um very usable okay now behind me i actually showed this on the powerpoint um this is all different kinds of fern leaves and also, we've got this kind of wonderful texture background, which a lot of you had mentioned, you know, Kleenex is paper. Uh, and then you've got a couple of the different kinds of leaves in here. And then again, a lot of times um, I'll paint the leaves and then press them on. Or in this case, I'll use a, a, a brayer. Uh, here's two that um, we've gotten. You can get these, again, I got these actually on Amazon. I have some in my other office. Um, and I got two different sizes. Um, because when we do uh, work on some of these things, I will lay something down. I'll put either a paper towel or something over it and, you know, brayer it so this gets a really flat um, effect, okay? Now, this one also was one that we spoke about. It was all different kinds of leaves. And again, heavily textured background. And then I also had all natural elements. There was some sage, some thyme. There was, um, well, this is sage. And then it was all different leaves um, that I used uh, gold leaf and gold uh, paint on, okay? And then at the end, I lightly went over it. So now, the good thing is, I'm showing you this. This is not fancy setup at all, but I'm showing you this just to show you how simple and you don't need to spend a lot of money um, doing this. So again, I've got cut cardboard that I used from what came in from Amazon. Um, I've got containers. This actually uh, was full of strawberries a couple days ago. And this I'm going to use as one of my palettes, okay? And I've got, I've got different set of acrylics here. I've got a whole bunch over there. And I've got gouache. So I'm doing a combination of acrylics and gouache. And again, have a, like a, 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 you know, I just washed this one. It's a clean t-shirt and just have these things available. Again, we were talking about this um, mega, this is actually mega gel hold, which you'll be using. Um, again, do, put a little in your hair if you like. Um, and also on your paper. But what I'm going to start doing, um, I'm just going to begin getting this kind of rough background that I want, okay? So again, you're welcome to use paper towels. I'm going to be using uh, ripped paper. Um, again, class, this was the paper that was 
um, inside the container that held the uh, T-square and stuff. So just to begin, I am just going to get my paints. I want to really kind of, I watered this down quite a bit. So I just want to get a little bit of a, a background going in here, okay? So again, um, it's going to be nice and kind of uh, very liquidy. Um, I've got just, you know, you could also use a foam brush on this, but I kind of want this uh, just kind of background that I can just kind of play with. Um, you know, it's all about, and, and of course, when you use gouache, of course, as you well know, you want it to, um, you definitely would like it to um, work fast on it because it dries pretty fast, okay? So, again, um, another thing to use um, is either a spray bottle. You can do this uh, in something like this. You could definitely use, um, put alcohol not that kind of alcohol, rubbing alcohol in the spray. Um, and then also to just give this a little bit more of that, you know, I'm actually doing a little bit of a things I, that washed up on the shore. I mentioned it in class. Um, I've got a nice, you can see these are, I mean, I couldn't have done a better job of drawing these out. So you've got these wonderful wood pieces that I collected um, on the beach. And again, these I'm going to use for basically stamping afterwards. Uh, again, be very careful. I don't want anybody to be touching things, or um, get, especially with rusty old nails or anything. Okay, so just just be really aware of you know what you're doing. Okay. Now again, you could do a flat ground if you'd like, and I'm actually working on a nice Bristol. It's a good uh, it's a good weight. Yeah, it's going to do some buckling. Now, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, wow, before it dries, um, I'm just going to be very, um, oh, let's see. I'm just going to be very um, fluid with this. And I'm just going to put in different, just a little bit of different uh, gouache color in the background. Uh, it'll it kind of neat when it's um, showing through. Remember, so much of this is going to probably end up being covered that it doesn't really, you know, um, it just looks a little odd right now. But um, you can see with any of these, uh, there's at least three layers, okay? So now I'm kind of watering up the whole thing. Of course, in another situation, wonderful um, piece of watercolor paper, could work, or uh, definitely, I want you to, I want a lot of different uses of paper. So, you know, you've got the uh, beautiful uh, Asian art papers, you've got wonderful, uh, there was even oatmeal paper that they pressed. Um, again, um, or you can just use regular watercolor paper and a, a Bristol works fine. Okay, so you can see now I'm kind of set up. Yes, it looks like a mess, um, but messes are a good thing. Um, now what I'm going to do is I am going to, I, and you, again, you see all the different kind of things I have around. Again, things are washed up on the beach. That's kind of my theme. So again, this definitely emulates, uh, seaweed. You, you can even use some old Christmas decorations. Uh, this also, if you painted this and pressed it down, definitely looks like seaweed also. So it's really kind of your imagination that you have to work with here. So what I'm going to just start with is I'm already mixing, I've already mixed a bit of the ground color. This way I can always go back and fix it. And um, I'm also gonna do these um, paints. Remember, don't do what I just did, but um, get those opened. Um, get that open. And I am gonna now um, start, I know I'm gonna be using these leaves and stuff. So right away, I'm gonna take my brush I've got other different containers that I've used. So I'll put some of this wonderful orange in here. Now remember, this is, this what I just used is acrylic. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is because it will uh, become a little bit stiffer. You know, I can also not just push it in there. Um, probably should have gloves on. But, um, oh wow, it matches my sweater. Okay, so again, I'm just pushing that down there. You can see already it's starting to uh, have an effect on the ground, but I'm actually going to make it even more. Um, 
effective. So right away, I'm just going to press that down and I'm going to use the, the, the brayer here, okay? So just, you know, take your time, push it around a little. Um, you can really get a good feeling for any of this type of stuff. Um, and again, I have not used, except for the brayer and a few other things, I've really um, used everything um, in my toolbox that is, you know, basically kind of made up, okay? Um, and it's all from uh, things we were going to throw away. Um, okay, so again, uh, both things are kind of drying at the same time. Now, I'm doing this a little uh, faster just, you know, for the presentation. Uh, it'd be more than welcome t for you to uh, stop at this point. You could... You could let the, the ground dry. That's another um, uh, alternative. But I like to keep it all kind of going at once. And it gets some, you know, really kind of cool effects. Uh, and you can see I'm actually getting a new, you know, just a little bit of color thing. And again, these are all secondary elements here. Um, they really just providing that. We spoke about this with your bouquets, these kind of secondary elements. Um, so I'm just, the brayer is probably one of the most important things that we're using. Also, um, again, you can imagine what a mess my studio always is. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, this is going to, when this sets, you'll see it a lot better. But also what I'm going to do is, again, since we're on this roll, um, I love, I'm going to start with this one, okay? You can see in here, this wonderful wood grain, okay? It's really um, years of, you know, it's so smooth and everything. It's, um, so I'm going to actually pour another color. Um, now, again, think out your colors however you want. I'm just I'm trying to be a little bit, um, I'm not really worried about color as much right now. I just want to get this um, rolling so you can all see. Um, how we're doing this. So, you know, you could think out your colors a bit more. I'm very spontaneous a lot of times, so um, I actually like the surprise. Um, so I've got my, um, I've got my strawberry container. Of course, I'm just finding out it's got holes in it. But anyways, um, I am going to now, uh, there's two ways of doing this. You can press this right in here, okay? You do it that way. You can take um, the brayer that you just used, you know, paint this up. And again, it's not going to be completely uh, flat because of the um, because of the the grooves and stuff in the wood. But now you can really start seeing how what a wonderful stamp this is going to make. Okay, so I'm actually uh, really excited about that. Um, and then, you know, go across a bit, you know, try to get, this is where you got to play with this a bit. Um, but again, I can also leave this guy put, just go back with my brush and really indent this, okay? So you can see there's going to be some neutral space in there. And by the time I stamp it a couple times, um, by the time I stamp it, you're going to have... Um, negative space, okay? So I'm just gonna put this right down here. Just press it down. A lot of people, um, you could use a, you could actually use the brayer again to smooth it out, but, and there, I'm get, okay, you, so you can see this kind of built up. And I actually want this, um, I'm gonna do it in different directions. I actually want this to go up and down the page, okay? Again, you can make very, you know, kind of contemporary piece. Um, I can also go back in here, if I'd like, pour a little bit of the ground in here, which would also um, blend in with blend in with this. So again, I'm because of its, you know, the drying, you know, it does really dry quite fast. Um, I'm going to hit this again, so I get this wonderful buildup. Okay, now. Also, if you want, and I'm doing this all on one so you can see it really easy. Um, at this point also, 
it would be really good. You could have done it before, but I like to kind of wait. And again, I'm showing you different parts of it. I am just pouring my hair gel in here. Um, I'm going to just mix it up a bit, but it's really going to change. Um, it, it grabs the paint differently and it gives, you know, so you end up getting a, a whole nother texture on top of that. Again, I'm just using this. I would definitely be taking more time with this. Um, but I'm using this just to get you, you know, to loosen you up and get you um, different techniques that you can use, okay? And also, never forget, you can see already um, with the hair gel in there, you know, here's without hair gel and with hair gel, and you can see how already how it's taken it, okay? Um, just gonna try to push this up for you so you can all see. Um, Actually, what I'll do is I'm going to show this at the end so um, you get a full thing. I'm going to go back to my brown mixture um, in here, knock this guy up again, and press down on this hair gel, okay? Yeah, you can hold it there a bit. Um, again, the extra gel. Um, and don't forget also, we always forget sometimes about the sides. These are really cool sides. Um, so I really like this uh, kind of combination here. And again, this is another time where I'm just going to throw in um, a little bit another color just to give it some interest, okay? Um, okay, so I've got another, um, I'm doing a little bit more of the brown color, and then I'm going to pop a shade of that wonderful kind of um, purpley color in here too, okay? So I'm going to do it here. And I'm also going to do it on here um, to get you a whole you know, the color sign. So there I go again, putting this down, pressing it. And the good thing about this is, at this point, these you don't have to worry about repeats, thank God. Um, but play with this. You know, really, you know, again, I'm going to put some of this down in here. Now, this one is... It, you know, I'm going to put this at an angle to hold it better. And then you can see, you can't see it from there, but um, there's definitely becoming more of a texture. I'm going back over this now because I use that um, kind of dusty lavender color. And even this by itself would make, remember, this is textured, but even this by itself, little twigs in there, which I think I'll leave in there become a really nice texture, okay? Now, what I am going to do is, again, this is my background, okay? So, I did use some of the um, leaves on here, but when this all dries, um, you can see this really, the, the gel really gives it uh, an extra, uh, really an extra additive, uh, and that's why the prints become so successful because they've got this extra, this really gets into the groove, like in my case, the wooden stuff, okay? I'm going to press this down again here and get messy on this. Um, don't, you know, do not do this like in the living room, okay? Um, and tell your parents if they missing some supplies from the kitchen that you, didn't, you don't know where they are. And don't give them my phone number because they'll be calling. Okay. Now, remember, um, the good thing about all this is when it dries, okay? So you can see this gel is going to dry, and it's, it's really a, a, an awesome effect. And again, I'm, I'm just, I wanted to show you what it was like without the um, gel and what it is. I, you definitely get much more of an imprint width, okay? Now, the other thing you can do, you know, depending on what you're using or what your theme is, I'm actually, um, now, again, I was talking about this as like just, you know, leftover Christmas tree stuff. Just press it down, you know? It just gives it that added effect. Um, actually, I might even leave a little bit of, you know what? Just randomly, I'm going to leave a little bit of sparkle in here. Um, you can call it a bedazzled, um, uh, uh, hair gel print um, and 
again, I don't know how it's going to dry. I don't know if it's, it, it'll stick much better on the gesso, of course, okay? So we got that in there. Um, now, I'm just, while it's still wet, I'm just, with the buildup of paint, it's a good time to, you know, do another kind of stamp. This is where cookie cutters and all kinds of things come in, okay? I'm just letting this go down. And again, um, this is just a really good point to show you. I know it was, it's, it's hard demonstrating that way, but at least it gives you an idea um, of, you know, what you can do. So, again, it's very messy. I've got covers all over the place because um, I like to, I don't want to be inhibited like by being too neat or something, okay? So here we go. Now what I'm going to do is let this, let this dry and then what I'm going to do, then I'm going back after all this is dried, okay? I'm going to go back in and put some more stampings on here, okay? Uh, probably in a different color. Um, I might do it all like a darker color or something, or even lighter would show up great on this. Um, but I think this gives you a good idea of, you know, how this works. Some of you had spoken already. Uh, I know um, Emily had gotten uh, Emily had gotten some wonderful um, doilies and stuff at the dollar store. So, again, you don't have to spend a lot of money on this, okay? You've already got a lot of your art supplies. Um, and that good. Okay. So we're all set. And, um, remember, relax, be very spontaneous. Okay. Be very spontaneous and just let your, um, brushes, let your different, uh, textures and stuff just kind of play. Okay. So I think this is going to be a really good start.